you should probably expect spoilers. He's rougher than the rest of them. And he's rougher than the best of them. He's even tougher than leather. Who that? It's the fighting freak knuckles, baby! Man, when Knuckles first arrived on the scene, he didn't make no piddly little entrance. He didn't come in on no sideways shuffle. He didn't pop up in the background like, Uh, hi everybody, I'm the new guy. Nah, nah, this dude came in like, Blah, I'm here bitches, bow down and kiss my shiny golden ring. All the video game magazines were showcasing him like crazy. The news previews were saying something about some next level ting going down between him and Sonic since this new kid was not here to play nice with the hedgehog. And as kids, me and my friends were hyped as hell over this guy. That's the thing, in the playground, as kids, we always used to pretend to be Sonic characters and uh, me and my friends would always fight about who gets to be Sonic for the day. And it was really lame and corny and shit. But um, there would always be a fight over who would be Sonic. Uh, until Knuckles came along. Then he changed everything. We weren't fighting about who gets to be Sonic now. Now we were fighting about who gets to be Knuckles the Echidna. Knuckles' story is fairly simple and pretty much common knowledge. But for those who don't know, I'll drop a little 411 anyway. Knuckles is an Echidna, which is basically a spiny anteater. They kinda look like hedgehogs, only with a Usopp nose and a gravitation towards hip hop music. Our boy Nux comes from a place called Angel Island, an island floating in the sky. The reason for this strange floating landmass being airborne is due to the power of the Master Emerald. And what is the Master Emerald? Well, you know those little shiny jewels Sonic kept collecting in his first two games? Yeah, the Master Emerald is one of those things on crack and steroids. Basically, the thing is giving off so much power, it's making an entire island float in the sky. So yeah, Knuckles is the guardian of this floating island and the emeralds that reside upon it. The reason he's guarding it? He doesn't really know. His tribe of echidnas are nowhere to be found and Knuckles' own memory is hazy on the details too. As far back as he can remember, he's been guarding the master emerald his entire life. And that's about all he really knows. Enter Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman, or whatever. After his defeat at the hands of the Hedgehog in Sonic 2, Eggman decides to start rebuilding his Death Egg space satellite on Angel Island. To keep Sonic at bay, Eggman chats some breeze to Knuckles, telling him Sonic has come to the island to steal the Master Emerald. And Nux ain't having any of that shit, so they start beefing. However, after catching Eggman in the act of trying to steal the Master Emerald for himself, Knuckles has a rude awakening and realises he had been tricked the whole time. Not being down with manipulation, Knuckles gives a big F you Ryuken to Eggman, teams up with Sonic to hand Eggman his ass, restores peace to his floating island, and then wraps the night away. Then he kinda done nothing worthy of note for the rest of the series, which is a tragedy all of its own, but I ain't gonna let it get to me, I'm just gonna creep. Backstory done, let's get on with the show. Visual design. Colour-wise, he's a great contrast to Sonic. His striking fiery red tones against Sonic's cool blue hues clash superbly like some kind of anthropomorphic bloods and crips face-off. Red was definitely a wise colour to give him and it certainly brought out the elements of his competitive stance against his rival Sonic. His chest design is an odd one, as I've heard numerous places say that it was originally going to be the Nike logo from a failed sponsorship deal between Nike and Sega. I don't know how true that is, but knowing Sega, I wouldn't have put such a bizarre marketing plan beyond them, it really honestly does sound like something they would have actually done. Only having enlarged knuckles on his little and index fingers gives his powerful stature a very unique shape. Strong and clearly designed for combat, but different enough to show that while he is a fighter, he's clearly packing more punch than your average brawler. And visually, it looks better this way than if all four of his knuckles had been enlarged. Like this, it looks like he's designed for digging. 
and rocking out and whatever. Knuckles also wears some sick creps blood. He's busting green socks with red shoes like he just don't give a shit what people think. I just never understood what those metallic plates were for. It's weird. It's it's out of place. I mean, you got, you've got the green socks and the, the yellow stripe red shoes and everything and it looks nice. And then you've got this weird metallic plate there and like... What is it? Did Knuckles have a sponsorship deal fall through with Lego as well? The way he wears his spines in an almost dreadlock fashion has to be my favourite part of his look, calling back to his Jamaican influences that inspired his design. It just gives Knuckles a more laid back feel compared to the Hedgehog. And for the record, I can dig Knuckles with purple eyes when he's got them. He looks like he's tripping balls, but I think it looks good on him. Overall, aside from the weird Lego plates on his shoes, I really wouldn't change anything else about him. His appearance is from a time when Sonic Team seemed to have more solid directions in their character design, and for most of us old school kids, I think we love Knuckles just the way he is. Personality. This is something that is never really considered when talking about Knuckles' personality, but seriously, in his earlier days, he was a real mischievous guy. He put in work to make Sonic's life as difficult as possible, and any time he managed to catch the hedgehog in one of his traps, he would have that shit-eating grin plastered all over his face. He was being an arsehole and loving every second of it. Shame then that this side of Knuckles has not been seen again since Sonic 3, as I think it would have been a really great characteristic of his to have kept. Imagine a modern day Knuckles, strong and fearless as he is, but with a sly side to him that gains enjoyment from causing 99 problems for his enemies. Instead, Knuckles went down the more quieter personality arc, opting for a no-nonsense approach to things. I'll admit, it does suit him and I personally have no real issues with the way Knuckles turned out in this aspect, but part of me wonders how things could have been instead. Sega had even planned to give Knuckles a Jamaican accent when it came time to providing voices for the characters. The era in which Knuckles was designed had its mainstream pop culture filled with Jamaican influence. It's entirely possible that if they had given Knuckles his supposed Jamaican accent, then we might have seen a much more cheerful and lively character evolve out of him. Mix that in with his long forgotten mischievous streak and you would have had a lively character who revels in causing a bit of mayhem every now and then. Naturally it never turned out that way and I'm always going to personally wonder what it might have been like if it did. All that what if scenario stuff aside though, there's one fact about Knuckles' personality that always gets brought around, and that's the fact that he's as gullible as a four year old believing in the Tooth Fairy. I don't know how many times Eggman can trick Knuckles into thinking Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, has done something bad. Really, I mean Knuckles do the maths bro, okay? Sonic has saved the world a couple of times, Eggman has endangered the world a couple of times, and from experience, your own personal experience, you know Eggman to be a motherfucking liar, okay? How many times are you gonna let this motherfucker trick your ass? And that's the thing that saddens me the most about Knuckles. He's clever enough to guard a whole damn island with his cunning tricks and wits about him. He is not dumb. What I don't like is how they can take something like naivety and then slowly change that into being stupid. Because there's a very big difference between being naive and being an airhead. I just find it a bit sad that the best thing they could think to do with Knuckles was lower his IQ. Oddly enough though, while we're at it, this weird sort of dumb, silly version of Knuckles has started gaining quite a following. And to be honest, I can I can agree, you know, I can see it from their perspective. It's funny, you know, Knuckles is haha, he's such an idiot, he comes out with great one-liners and everything. I just kind of wish it had been another character instead of Knuckles. I just think Knuckles is better than that, that's all. As he is, his personality is okay. It does nothing wrong for him until some of the other cast members treat him like an idiot and then he plays right into their hand. That said, his personality seems to have found a soft spot within Rouge the Bat, and there's been slight hints of a bond brewing between the two. It's never fully developed, and within the Sonic universe I don't expect it will, but for a brief time it was nice to see another character look at Knuckles and find something they found charming, rather than a bumbling idiot who is always on the receiving end of a joke. As I said, there's nothing really wrong with him, but all things considered though, thinking about the character Knuckles used to be, I'm always expecting to see more from him. 
and because of that, I'm always left feeling short changed since his personality didn't turn out the way I imagined it would have. He's the guardian of the most powerful emerald in the whole world, and on top of all of that, he has to protect the entire island that the emerald is situated on. Knowing that the emeralds are a source of incredible power, and the fact that Knuckles is in charge of God and the most powerful one of them all kind of speaks volumes on how important this character is. His entire tribe left him alone to guard the thing. Knuckles is an original gangster in terms of importance. But then there's this. In Sonic Adventure 1, Along with Knuckles, we see his lost Echidna tribe. For the first time in game continuity, Knuckles, together with Knuckles, we are watching this unfold. We see Takal the Echidna, we see the flashbacks to the lost tribe and everything. So, you know, it's a moment of real great importance. Clearly, this is the first time we are ever seeing this in a Sonic game. Knuckles is seeing this for the first time. And what does he do? Nothing. He has no major reaction, he never speaks about it to anybody, he doesn't ask questions on what he's witnessing and learning. Dude, this is your lost tribe! You're finally seeing the history of them after all this time, and your best response to this life-changing moment is the equivalent of a soggy bunch of ellipses and a warm fart. Maybe Nux just didn't really give a shit, I don't know, but man, one absolutely wasted opportunity to see some growth in a character so dripped in backstory as him. Though there is one little moment where Knuckles did something that, for me personally, cemented his level of importance to the world he comes from. Most people don't talk about this because they tend not to read too much into it, merely passing it off as a throwaway scene, but this truly has to be Knuckles' greatest achievement. And that is... He literally knocks the Super out of Super Sonic. Super Sonic, a powerful, powerful form of the Hedgehog, virtually almost indestructible okay unstoppable okay is stopped in his tracks by knuckles the echidna to me there is no other way for that scene to be interpreted sonic has all the emeralds coming in off of the end of sonic 2 and there had to be a logical story driven way for him to lose them and sega saw fit to show us the moment where knuckles first in-game appearance is that of him literally smacking the shit out of super sonic and taking the jewels from him Sega could have written that introduction any other way. Sonic could have easily lost the emeralds by some other means. Hell, Sonic didn't even need to be Super Sonic for that scene to make sense. He could have just arrived on the island normally without a grand entrance and got his thing stolen by the Echidna. No. Sega saw it fit to show us Super Sonic arrive, get hit by Knuckles, get his shit stolen by Knuckles, show Knuckles laugh his ass off, and then duck out. Personally, this little moment will forever signify just how important Knuckles is because no character before nor since then has even come close to achieving such a thing within the same conditions. Nobody. Yeah, okay, Knuckles' level of importance has waned in recent years due to the fact that he started to be palmed off as Sonic's second sidekick, but he's got a few noteworthy things under his belt to at least remind people why he deserves to be standing up front and not relegated to the recycle bin like some of the less fortunate Sonic characters. Conclusion. In this modern day, the role of Sonic's rival seems to be filled by Shadow now, thus leaving Knuckles to sort of hang around and jog along with whatever is currently going on in the Sonic universe. He's still considered a central character, otherwise we would not be seeing him as often as we do, but I hate to say that his heydays are long behind him now. He managed to achieve some great things early on in his career, and those things still hold so much merit today, which might be why his fanbase has stuck around as long as they have. And honestly, I like to think I'm one of those people too. Yeah, you know what, okay, I'm gonna give Knuckles the Valha emblem. Uh, mainly because he's my favourite character. Out of the whole Sonic lineup, he is one of my favourite characters. He has tamed out a lot over the years, he's a bit more laid back now, and. He hasn't sort of turned out the way I wanted him to, but he's still a badass to me. I still look at him and I'm like, yeah, you know, with the knuckles up and everything. And I still really actually want to hear what he would sound like with a Jamaican accent. Can somebody holler at Damian Marley and just find out if he, if he wants to be a voice actor for like a, a Sonic character? 
was like, I'd imagine Damien Marley would be up for that, bruv. Yeah, man. 